In the last video, we proved a very important result, that the Hamiltonian operator can be expressed in one of two ways, in terms of the A plus, A minus operators. So as usual, uh, what we proved in the last video will come in handy in the next step of our derivation. So moving on with our derivation, the next thing that we're going to do is that I'm going to make a claim. I'm going to claim that if there is a function, xi, that satisfies the time-independent Schrodinger equation with energy level e, then I'm going to claim that if this is true, then this function, or this function over here, a plus xi, so a plus is the operator applied to the function xi, so this gives us this new function, a plus xi. I'm going to claim that a plus xi is, uh, also satisfies the Schrodinger equation with an energy level of e plus h omega. So when I say that something satisfies the Schrodinger equation with energy level e, that means this relationship is true. So this is exactly what the Schrodinger equation is. So when I'm saying that this also satisfies the Schrodinger equation, I'm saying that this expression here can also satisfy this, uh, this uh, equality over here. So in order to prove this, let's try to let's try to work our way through this Schrodinger equation to see if whether both sides matches. So I'm going to apply this the Hamiltonian operator to the function a plus xi over here, and then if what I claimed is true, I'm going to end up with an expression that is going to be an energy level e plus h omega times the function itself. So let's see if this is true. So applying the Hamiltonian operator to this function, here I'm going to invoke the result that we had last time, so I'm going to use this definition of the Hamiltonian operator. And then I'm using this one instead of this one uh, for a special reason, so you'll see later on. So let's just stick to using this uh, definition for now. So uh, this is just uh, apply, directly applying the definition of this scrolling, uh, this Hamiltonian operator. And then the next step, I'm going to absorb this A plus operator inside the brackets. So I can do this. It's valid to put this inside the brackets as long as I retain the order. So I can't put, put this A plus in the middle at the front. Uh, I have to make sure that this A plus is going to be applied to this function at, at first. So I have to put this on the right hand side. And then I'm going to pull this left a plus out of the brackets. And then because this is just a constant, I can move it around so I can pull the a plus outside as well. So now you arrive at something that looks pretty similar. So this expression here looks pretty similar to this Hamiltonian operator, right? And the only difference is that instead of a minus, we have a plus over here. So, so let's try to use this definition of the Hamiltonian operator as well. Let's try to apply it to what we have over here. So, so in order to do that, I'm going to have to change this uh, plus sign into a negative. So if I change this to a negative sign, I need to uh, compensate by adding 1. So as you can see, 1 plus 1 minus 1 half, I'll just get back the 1 half over here. And so moving on, I'm going to group up some of these terms together. So I'm going to pull out the a plus to the very front. I'm going to move these constants in. And then I have a minus a plus minus one half psi. And then we also have this plus one that is going to be multiplied by these constants. So we're also going to have a h omega psi. So obviously I've done this so that I can use this definition over here. So recall that this is also the Hamiltonian operator. So right now I have the Hamiltonian operator applied to the function xi. So here I'm assuming that xi is a function that satisfies the Schrodinger equation. So this relationship is true. So I can apply this relationship directly for our next step. So these Hamiltonian operator applied to this function is going to give us the energy level times the function itself. So grouping up the constants together. And then because these are constants, I can uh, shift the operator, a plus operator, over to the right. And so there we have it. This is exactly what we wanted to find. So going back, what we've proved now is just that, uh, just now is that the Hamiltonian operator applied to a plus xi is equal to this expression, which is exactly this Schrodinger equation. So the function is a plus xi, and the energy level is e plus h omega. 
So we've proven this claim that if xi is a function that satisfies the Schrodinger equation with energy level e, then a plus xi is also another function that satisfies the Schrodinger equation with an energy level of e plus h omega. And then you can do something, you can do the exact same thing for a minus xi as well. So I'm not going to prove what this leads to, so you can try, yeah, you, can, you need to go through a similar process, so you can try that out yourself. But after you go through the, this same process again, you will get e minus h omega, a minus xi. So here we've shown two things. So if xi satisfies the Schrodinger equation with energy level e, then both a plus xi and a minus xi uh, solutions to the Schrodinger equation with these corresponding energy levels.